Okay, good morning everyone and welcome to our third Spotlight on Leadership series this morning. I am super excited to bring one of my favorite people to you, um, Richard Parkhouse. He has um, been a mentor of mine for a long time. We've done a ton of work together back when I was a high school activities director and um, assistant principal. Um, and he has, um, in the last few years, added author to his repertoire of skills, building the world's greatest schools. Um, and he's going to tell you a little bit more about that in a second. Um, so if we can go to the next screen, Richard, he's my Vanna today. Um, so my name is Jennifer Destin, and I'm a client partner for Franklin Covey Education. We are the makers of the seven habits of highly effective people, highly effective teens, happy kids, highly effective families, all those good things. Um, but prior to that, earlier this year, I started my 20th year in education, um, but I am just so passionate about um, sharing leadership and spreading it to the world that I left public education to go work for Franklin Covey. So I'm super excited to be in a spot where I can just share resources with educators and families and hopefully um, make this world a better place through that avenue. And I will pass it over to Richard to introduce himself. Oh, did you want to talk about this slide? Uh, we'll do it next. Or do it next. So you yeah, want... I want you to just introduce yourself. Hello. Brag um, about yourself for a little bit. <laughs> um, my good friends call me Park, and I have a lot of good friends on this, so it's, it's great to see everybody. Um, I was 25 years in the schoolhouse as um, a middle level for about six years. The rest of that time was at the high school level was an activities director for 18 years. I was an assistant principal. And then at that point, I left um, the schoolhouse and started to work um, I'm gonna be based on what I've seen in visiting over 2000 schools. And what I've tried to do is to simplify this complex um, place that we call school and, and put it into six values, which I will share a little bit later. Uh, I'm really looking forward to this because um, we're in some challenging times. And so I'm hoping today I can, I can challenge your thought processes and um, hopefully take this to a new level. So Jen, I wanna say thank you for allowing me to be a part of this. Uh, I'm, I'm truly honored. So, so thank you so much because uh, you've made my day, my girl. <laughs> so much love to you. All right, so the next slide, we want to be able to share our resources with you in whatever capacity um, you would like. And we would also like your feedback. I'm doing um, one of these Spotlight on Leaderships every week. So um, if you would be so kind when we are done to complete this feedback form, if you wouldn't mind, you can just snap a picture of this um, slide with your phone so that when we get off, you know the address to go to. Um, it not only will be an evaluation of today's webinar and how helpful it was to you, it will give us good feedback for creating good content for you in the future and also allow for us to send you this recording or maybe get some more information on anything that I or Richard um, have to offer. Next slide. Oops. So today, oh, go Let back. Let me go back, sorry. Today we are talking about building the world's greatest virtual school. Um, and there's many ways to do that. And what Richard does and what we do here at Franklin Covey is so complimentary to each other. Um, so if you aren't familiar with the seven habits, if you could just click on that link for me, Richard. I just wanna share with you um, just very briefly the, the seven habits of highly effective people. Um, we, work, we work this into the curriculum. We have different courses. But basically what we're doing is we're teaching, we're teaching humans um, the habits that help them be better and make their world a better place. So we're talking about self-discipline and habit one being proactive. When we're talking about um, habit two, beginning in the, with the end in mind, we're teaching students how to have a vision. With habit three, we're looking at putting first things first, how to really have that initiative and prioritize. Um, habit four starts with working with interpersonal relationships and really thinking win-win, building relationships. Um, habit five, seek first to understand, then be understood. It's all about communication. It's all about listening. And if we're going to be building the world's greatest schools, listening is going to be one of the most important things that we could do. 
Um, and that goes along with synergizing what we're doing today, working together, collaborating, coming up with solutions, um, and third alternatives that we couldn't come up with on our own. And then finally, Habit 7, Sharpening the Saw. A lot of us are trying to work on that right now um, in this COVID stay-at-home quarantine era. Um, so Habit 7 is definitely important to always be mindful of taking care of yourself. And then next, go ahead and click next, Richard. Oh, go back. You got to go back to that other slide. Sorry okay. <laughs> for the links. Got it. Um, I just want to show you where you can get more information. If you can click on that Leader and Me resources link for me. Um, and again, if you guys want to snap a picture of this slide, you can see where you can go on the website and look at these resources. Um, but basically, if the link's not working, the, the leaderandme.org, we have free resources that are usually available for our subscription. There you go. Our subscription only clients. But what we've done is we've bundled them into what we call virtual care packages for free um, for our community. And you can see we have a link for families, we have a link for teachers, and we have a link for administrators. So I just encourage you to go in there, play around. Again, usually this is our stuff that is for our subscription only um, schools but we have opened it up because um, at this time, we just really believe everybody needs the seven habits and everybody needs these resources. Um, so feel free to go check them out and, and use them with your students. Um, and if you are interested again, uh, we have, um, I have a whole site full of K through eight resources. If you wanna see what uh, Leader in Me School would look like and some, some resources we have to support you. Um, you can just go on there and I have some videos and some schools, some leader and me schools. And I have some documents that show you how it aligns to SEL and UDL, um, academics and lesson design, trauma-informed practices. Um, so there's a lot of good stuff in there that you can just kind of poke around and see if leader and me, um, some of these resources might help you build a better school. And then last but not least, our, uh, we have a new high school curriculum. We have four courses. They're all online and students go in there and they can do them on their own. There's a teacher portal. There's a student portal. Um, really excited about our Leader in Me High School online courses. And um, we actually have a certificate process where um, high schoolers can graduate with a certificate in leadership or Franklin Covey, which is a pretty big deal. So that's it about Leader and Me and how we are working to build the world's greatest schools. And now I'm gonna hand it over to Richard uh, for the rest of our time together uh, to share with us some of his thoughts. Okay, thank you again. Um, first of all, uh, I just uh, wanna convey um, the thoughts about what we're experiencing right now. And I'm, I'm hoping each and every one of you is safe and healthy and your family is, is doing well because as we head into, as they say, these next two weeks, they're gonna be challenging times for, for all of us. And, um, and I think what, what this has done is definitely changed my life and, and the way that I respond. And um, I miss my grandkids. Um, I get to FaceTime them. I get to take time as all of us are doing. So um, we've really changed the way that we're doing things. And so as we head into this time, um, I just want to raise some questions regarding um, what's it going to look like when we come back? What is it we can do between now and the end of May, June, whenever your school year ends, as far as preparation, because we have a lot of time now, uh, and we're doing a lot of Zoom staff meetings, where we're doing meetings with leadership class, classes and classrooms and this whole, whole piece. So what is it that we can do during this time um, to be able to, um, to take this negative, if you will, and it's definitely a negative time, but I believe out of every negative comes a positive. And I think some great things are going to come out of this for our schools. As, um, again, what is it going to look like when we come back? How is this going to impact who we are and what we do? So again, Jen gave some of the information. If you'd like to reach out to me personally after this is over, my contact information is on the screen there. Uh, and I'd be glad to... Um, to help you and, and move along in this process. So 
as we go through this today, uh, I'm going to challenge you. Uh, please, I, it's not meant to offend. It's meant for you to internalize this and go <laughs> deep into um, your thought processes and really take a look. So I ask you to open up your heart and take a look at, at what's going on in your world as an educator. Um, and then understand that this whole component is all about what we can do to make our schools a better place. So the first thing, if you have some notes, hopefully you're taking some notes, I'd just like you to take, say, 15, 30 seconds and just define it. No more than 10 words, please. How would you define um, your culture? How would you define your school culture? And just put that six to 10 words. No big, long dissertation, please. So let's take about um, 30 seconds, if you will, and then um, we'll, we'll come up with some thoughts. Hey, and feel free to use the chat box as well. Drop them in that chat box. I'd love to see what everyone, what yes. everyone says. It would be a good idea for me to turn that on, huh? I think it's on. I'm not seeing it on mine. Okay, it's working. Just click at the bottom. It should be right next to the button where it says share screen. Is that it? Can you see where I am? No, because you're just sharing your presentation. Okay. That's fine. I can read them too. Yeah, as they come up, that would be. World's greatest school where every story matters. A place of becoming where all students are seen, heard, and loved. Emerging. Okay, so let's take a look at those words, and um, and and I, how is that being communicated? Because what I'm what I'm finding in in visiting and talking to people is that if each of us were to take a look at how we would define our schools, and and I understand we're all at different sites for the most part, but a lot of times we say let's we we have a really positive school culture. And people talk a lot about school culture. But what I'm really asking you to do today and in, in the next couple of weeks or so, start thinking about how would you define it? And is it in universal language so everybody is in agreement and knows what our culture is and what it is supposed to be? Because everywhere you go, it's we have to have a positive school culture and we have a great school culture and our climate is wonderful. Well, I'd like you to be able to dig deep inside and ask yourself, what does that mean? What does that truly mean? What does it mean to have a positive school culture? Is it truly a positive school culture for everyone? Or is it just a positive school culture for a select few? So we want to be able to explore those, um, those words. And how does it feel? What does it feel like to be a part of your school culture? How do kids feel? So if we take a look at our celebrations, do kids feel that they're connected to your celebrations? And how does it feel to be celebrated? Who are you celebrating? So through your celebrations, through your actions, what are you truly communicating? Because that's what people and that's what kids are seeing. A lot of times we say, you know, we believe all kids have futures, but um, we wish those kids would just go away or something to that effect. So if you truly believe that, then you need to be able to live that. So if just what's it feel, to, if you were a kid at your school, what would it feel like to be a part of your school culture? Just first thing that pops to your mind. Just oh. let's go ahead and share some of those. Anybody want to share out loud? I'm, I'm open to uh, having a, an open discussion here. Well, 
that was a good response. <laughs> <laughs> so how does it feel to be a part? We, we talk about, think about the words we use and, and the jargon, because I'm, I'm, I really want you to take a look at getting away from jargon, uh, especially now, is that think about where we are now and what truly matters. You know, it's for our seniors, SATs don't matter now. Think about the struggles we're having with with grades, do we have pass fail? How do we grade our kids? Are we in a place to what is truly, what truly matters? And I think out of this, I'm hoping what will happen is that we will take, that, take a step back and truly grasp what is it we're doing and what really matters in our school communities. Um, so let's take a look at the next thought of, if I'm not included, how can I be connected? So who are you including? Think about our, our instruction right now with kids. What are we doing to include those kids? What are we doing to make them a part of the learning? Because a lot of kids are saying, why do I need to do this? Why do I, why do I, do we, do we, have to do homework? Does our homework count? All of the questioning things that are kids that are going on. So what are we doing to connect kids to who you are, what you do, what you believe, and what you value during these challenging times? Our, our values and our beliefs in line yesterday as well as today. So how do you connect kids? How do you connect kids if you're defining your culture and you're only celebrating and only focusing on the top few, the gifted, the elite? A lot of times, most of our connections are with what I call the royal family. Cheerleaders, athletes, student body leaders, homecoming queens, prom kings, kings, all of that particular group. There's nothing wrong with that because it is truly a part of our school. But when you go back to defining your culture, what does it say to those kids? And what does it say to kids that aren't connected? Are your values and your beliefs and how you define your culture truly connecting all kids? So what makes your school a special place? So how would you, how would you define that is that if what makes your school unique and these are questions that um, that I would encourage you to use with if you have a class especially a leadership class if you're looking for material for staff in service is that during this time is that what makes what we're doing special and then more importantly what are we going to do when kids come back and we're hearing, I heard today on the news, is that it looks like as of today, we'll probably be opening um, on schedule or close to September at some point. So, and you know that changes every day. But what are we doing to prepare? Because it is not going to be the same. It is going to be truly different. So I look at this as a great opportunity to bring about this change and bring about the messaging and bring about communicating universally what it is that we do and what it is that we believe. So Jen, did, did anybody come up with, I apologize, I don't have the chat on my screen. Um, did anybody list what makes their school a special place? Um, welcoming to most, excluding a few. Um, seen, heard, and loved. Being heard is so much like being loved, and that is hard to tell the difference. Students feel at home at our school. They feel loved and safe. Um, and there's a lot of good thoughts here. Makes me think, what do we do to make our culture a reality? What do the walls say to our kids about how we feel about them? What do all of our staff members communicate clearly to each of our students? And, um, go ahead. 
And that's such a good point because that's all part of our messaging is that if we have murals or, or sayings on the wall, do kids walk by and say, yep, that's what we do here? Or is it just something that we put up on the wall because it's a positive thing to say? Well, and Gabe Samakian, he makes a good point in the chat box. He says, in today's stay-at-home model, it will require us to change how we engage and connect with students. Now more than ever, the social-emotional learning and helping students understanding how to take ownership of their learning is essential. That's a really good point. And, and, and here is the thing that it's, it, it's such a powerful statement, but what, what should be going on now should not be any different than what we did in December. Now, understanding the, the parameters of social distancing and all of those things and the isolation and staying home with dogs <laughs> is, that, um, is, is that why are we changing things in our beliefs and our values. It's interesting, I've had some school people that I've had connections with and said, during this time, we need to make sure we're doing this, this, and this. And there shouldn't be any different than what you're doing when we come back in, whenever it is that we're going to return. So we need to start identifying what makes our school a special place and then start to develop universal language with that so everybody knows why we're special and are we living up to our beliefs and our values and, and creating this culture of, of creating special places for kids. Or as what I say, my beliefs is creating a culture of significance where everyone truly matters because I'm not sure in visiting over 2,000 schools is that everyone truly matters. I see a lot of words, and again, this is that point. I'm not trying to offend anybody. I'm just trying to get you to dig deep inside and take a real hard, realistic look at your school community. So- Richard, um, Connie Chavez said something in the chat box that really resonates with me as I think about my own two daughters that are here in high school. Um, she said, I also wonder if kids understand why we need every one of them there. Do they know they contribute and are valued for their talent, even those talents that are often unseen or done in the quiet? I think it's something for us to really think about of valuing everyone's worth and potential. And I don't, I don't think that teenagers realize how they contribute to a group and when they're not present. You know, so when teachers are having these Zoom meetings right now during the stay at home, when kids don't come, like that matters. I wonder what we're doing as educators and teachers to reach out to kids to remind them that they're, they're an important piece of that. And, and that's exactly what we're trying to get to. And what, what a lot of my work is, is trying to deal with those messaging so it's clear, concise, simplified, so everybody's delivering the same message that you are important. But it, and as we move into this, um, I'll define a little bit of that so that we can start that process to see what is happening. But you're absolutely right. What are we telling kids? Am I muted? You aren't now. Somebody else was making noise, so I had to mute everybody, but I unmuted you. I, all of a sudden, I thought, but I, I saw the mute sign, so, and all you're going to get is my hands talking. Yeah, I muted everybody voice. else, but I <laughs> unmuted you because so, it sounded like someone was getting in their car or something. Okay. So, how would you define your culture now? Based on our interactions with kids, how would you define that now? Just take 15 seconds, sort of respond to that if you would. And feel free, participants, to unmute yourself yes. and, and just share aloud as a discussion. I mean, we would love for this to be a discussion. Um, just mute yourself afterwards. <laughs> yes, background. please. Just put in, the more interaction, the engagement piece is critical. <laughs> so we can all learn from one another because there's some amazing people that are on this call. 
Okay, I'll speak up. <laughs> Yay, because I was going to call on you, Val. <laughs> okay, well, I was going to say, um, I'm trying to maintain a lot of the things that I've, I've used to always do. Um, last Friday, every Friday we do High Five Friday on campus. So I gave a virtual high five to my staff and to my students and said, give a high five to your families, keep it going. It's Friday, everyone should have your spirit wear on. Um, Monday, I met with my Renaissance class and I asked them all to wear their class polo. So we're unified and we're there, we're present. Wednesdays is always college shirt Wednesdays. We showed up in our college shirts on Wednesday for our meeting. With my history class, we're doing silly things. Our first meeting, I said, everybody wear a hat. So everybody put a hat on or some kind of headgear today. And at 11, we're meeting and I asked them to bring a pet or bring a stuffed animal <laughs> to the meeting. So I want to keep should be interesting. live and the connections alive. I'm also sending out emails to my staff and just saying, you know, um, today's a great day and sending some inspirational reading to them, telling them that, you know, we love them and we care for them and we're here to help. And so just trying to keep what we have in our buildings alive out here. Like Park said, I want to keep that going. I even reminded our staff. Let's have our students write down in their agenda. What is their assignments daily? What meets do they have? Keep them organized, keep them on the same track that we did in school. It's just a little different. And so if we can think about those traditions and those day-to-day -day things that students feel secure in and know, then I think it's going to help sustain them. Great, great point, Val, because what happens is that we should not be we should not be changing what we're doing, okay? Our why should not be changing. How we do it has definitely changed because now, you know, the teachers are just doing amazing things and uh, because we're, uh, some people are not comfortable going into the virtual world. And so I, I know watching my grandkids and, and what's taking place with them, um, they have a, a, a teacher who is, just struggles with the technology. So she's not getting the same, same level as she normally would. But at home, I watch how it's changed. They're, they're, my grandkids are on a schedule. So nine o'clock, they're starting on their lessons and their, their instruction. And then at one o'clock, they have their physical activity. So those of you who know my grandkids, and if you've read the book about Kylie and Alyssa, Kylie is working on, she does an hour and a half of ballet. And Alyssa's a softball player. So she's getting in her swings and she's a pitcher. She's working on all of that stuff. Austin then is um, just Austin. And he goes out and works baseball wise because that's what season he's in right now. But they have a structure of what's going on at home. And um, we're trying to fit in now to that structure. So. Our culture, the point, and thanks for bringing that up again, Val, is that really our culture shouldn't change, but I think it has. So think about that, and let's, let's take a look at this. In 10 words or less, write down what it is that you do. What is it that you do? And then later on, um, you can utilize this either with staff or with your leadership class to be able to ask them what is it that we do so that you can change it. But a simple question, 10 words or less. And just first thing that pops into your mind, just short and sweet and concise. What is it that you do or what is it as a school community you do? And, and let's share this out. So please, let's uh, have some, uh, just unmute yourself and share it real quick. Since it's super quiet, I'll go ahead and talk, I guess. Um, Thank you, Chris. How are you? Doing very well. Good to see you. Sorry I was late. I got caught up on another call. Um, I think the main thing that we do, or I try to do, is inspire through actions more than words. And try to show the kids how much I care for them and how it makes me feel to care for them. I know that's now going more than 10 words, but... And I, because if they can do that, if they can inspire those around them 
through their actions, I think that spreads and helps culture. Okay. Thank you, Chris. Someone else want to jump in? So, Dr. Wolf, I see you hiding out there. I'm not going to let you get because I know you have to leave and, and go do some other things. Um, Steve Wolf is a superintendent from Colorado. So, uh, good longtime friend, great man, great educator, just doing amazing things with kids. You know, we, we have to make sure that we reach out and connect every week with every kid. And, you know, our district is not small, but we have them divided up, and so they're able to do that. Another thing we, that we have a little time to do now is, uh, I don't know if you've ever gotten handwritten notes, but it's an opportunity to connect. Any connection piece we can have at this point, point is important. Kids are hardwired for a connection. They, they starve for it. In fact, in an organization you and I were involved in that we uh, – we really focus on, we, we know we achieve what we reward, recognize, respect, and reinforce, and those four R's are important. That fifth R relationship is huge. And uh, it really doesn't matter how well they do the Pythagorean theorem if they have no relationship with the person teaching it. So that, that's been so important to us to continue even digitally. Well, a key point was that relationship piece because our kids are missing that as well as our teachers. Amen. The teachers I talk to are saying, oh, I miss my kids. And, and the kids are saying now, I miss school. So think about what if we were in a normal setting right now as we head into either spring break coming off of spring break, people are saying, I can't wait to get out of here in a normal situation. Yeah. So let's take a look at, at the messages and and what is it that we're communicating? So again, my work stems from trying to get it so it's so clear and concise that nobody can read between the lines. Because as I walk on campuses, this is what I see. It's so confusing. And if we can get at a point to where it is clear and concise and you can tell everything that you do within your school or your leadership class on one page of paper, I was looking at a school and I looked at their mission statement. It was a whole page long. Nobody knows what that is. Well, if we take a look at the mission statement, the mission statement should be no more than 10 words. And it should be so clear and concise that a kindergartner can repeat it. And then stay away from education age or the jargon. For example, I use this one is very prevalent right now is that we're preparing kids for the 21st century. Well, how are we doing that today? Yeah, we're 20 years in. Yeah, <laughs> we're, we're coming into, we don't know what we're going to be preparing kids for in November. We don't know. We hope that we just go back and everything's going to be as it was. No, our world has changed. I was just listening today and they were talking about, we're no longer going to shake hands. Oh my gosh, that is tough for me because, you know, I'm a hugger. And when I see somebody, that embrace is really important. Now, people are going to look and say, stay away, Park, stay away. And, and so it's just interesting times. So again, the purpose of today is to go back and take a look at what you're communicating to people. And if you're in a K-8 school, it has to be so simple that an eighth grader understands it as well as a kindergartner. Or in a high school, it would be freshmen and seniors. It has to be simple, clear, and concise. And getting at this point is really challenging. So this is what I believe you do, because this is what I'm trying to do today, is to change lives and impact futures. My good friends know that, and they, I, they have identified me with this slogan, because this is mine. Well, what is yours? And what happens if every school, let's take a look at an example of your school, and ask yourself, what is it you do? Well, we change lives and impact futures. So if we were back in December, would that be any different today than what it was in December? How we go about it is different, but our same vision and our same goals for what it is that we do is to change their lives and impact their futures. How we're doing it is different today. 
So take a look at what you put in place and what you have in either mission statements or beliefs or values, and are they in play today? If not, there's an opportunity to change it in a positive direction. So how are you connecting them to what it is that you do? So take a look at what you wrote down. So how are you connecting kids to what it is that you do? I'll use mine as an example, changing lives and impacting futures. So when you put on an event, you're changing lives and impacting futures. The whole idea of what Val was talking about, having hats and their dogs and pets and all that, that's going to be so cool to be able to have kids holding up their pets. And, and just think about the engagement that's going to take place during that time. So what is it that we're communicating? And I challenge you to look at your messages and ask yourself, are they simple? Or are they written in education ease, so nobody understands them, and it's we pontificate as, as educators. Think about your, your community. Think about the clientele that you deal with. What your messages are on your web page or, or on your district site, are they simple enough so that they can understand it? Are they authentic, and are they clear and concise? So if you follow these three steps, simplicity, authentic, and clear and concise, then you're going to take those steps to be able to create um, a positive environment and start this process of whittling down to getting to the true essence, the true essence of why you exist. And when you're writing these words, this came out of, I was working with a staff and just this brilliant educator, and he did not want me to use his name. And I said, oh, come on, dude, this is powerful. We were in the middle of this because we have these arguments. So think about it. If you bring people together and, we're, and you have 40 people talking about values and beliefs, you have 40 different sets of values and beliefs. So you have 40 different sets of values and beliefs that are being communicated to your students, staff, and community. Who do you listen to? Who's right? We're confusing kids. So he came up with this saying, and it's just so powerful. And, and um, our words have to connect to our weakest kid in their darkest hour. And I step back and I'm just going, oh, he blew me away. Because take a look at your words. Think about everything that we talk about. This is, okay, we have to be college and career ready. I'm not sure. We're making the move to become career ready. But really our focus is we're going to get kids to college. So how many of those kids are dealing with some type of situation in their home life, their personal life? Kids that are that are babysitting the family until midnight while mom and dad are out working, is that are your words written for them? <clears throat> so think about this statement because everything that I do now is I reflect upon what this great educator shared. So what is it you do? These are two schools that I worked with and this is what they came up with. And this was about a three-day process, four-day process. It is not easy. So if you go to this, these two schools, their teachers will tell you, say, so tell us, what is it we do? We inspire greatness and impact futures. So is that going to be the same thing in December as it is today? Yes. How we do it is going to be different. But our educators, when we have our virtual classrooms, they should be inspiring greatness within their students. And it shouldn't be any different than what they did again in December or what it is that they're gonna do when we reopen. Another school says, what is it we do? We empower others to explore, explore greatness. So everybody knows this. So think about the first day of school when you're talking about to a group of kids, either class, assemblies, whatever it is. 
Let me tell you what it is we do here at ABC School. We inspire greatness and we impact futures. Or we're here to help you to prepare for the 21st century. If you're a kid, which one are you going to connect to? If you're an educator, what is it that you're going to do? Because the reason that you are there, or the why, if you will, the why is to inspire greatness and impact futures. Clear, concise, simple. Now, this took, like I said, three to five days for the staff to come up with, because it is not easy. If you're going to go and take something and say, this is what we do, it's not going to work. It will not work because it's gonna be another thing. Oh, that's theirs and not ours. So as we get in this and we take a look at the next step of what is it you believe and value? It's really interesting what I found in asking a series of questions with educators is that um, I ask questions, so tell me what it is you do. And people struggle with that. They sort of think about it. You're mentally, what was going on when I asked that question? Is that I know when I was asked that question, I went through the training for the first time. I had this discussion with myself, my internal voice that was saying, I don't know, what is it that I do? What is it that I truly do? And what you're trying to do in this process is get to the ground floor of the foundation for what you're gonna build upon. So what is it you believe and what is it you value? Again, this is something you could do with your staff and you could do those on separate times, separate days, something you could do with your leadership classes. So let's take a look at this, <coughs> pardon me. A lot of things that I see is that our messages that are in schools, they become artwork on the wall. So. I want you to think about asking your staff and students some questions is that what does that mean and can we prove it? What does that mean and can we prove it? So are your beliefs and values part of everything you do? So as you're during, during excuse me, you're during this challenging time, your beliefs and values should not change. But I know that districts, I have a friend of mine in their district, they changed their whole values to meet their needs today. But if they would have had solid beliefs and values, it wouldn't, there wouldn't be any change. Everybody would know what to do. Because we would adhere. What if you created a place where everyone knew and understood the beliefs and values and they agreed upon them? What would happen to your organization? Are those beliefs and values being utilized today? Think about the beliefs and values in your leadership class or in your school community. Are they being utilized? Again, have this serious internal conversation with yourself and really dig in deeply to what's going on in your school community. So, this is a school we worked with, and this took about six days. But if you go to this school, what is it they do? We inspire greatness and impact futures. This is what we believe. We are what we believe. All students can. Everyone has a gift. Everyone needs a teacher. What you do matters. Be proud. So how do they do this? How do they inspire greatness and impact futures? By being proud. One, they persevere. Excuse me, I hit that button. They persevere. Don't quit, keep going, win your challenges. Could they apply that today? So what they were doing back in December, they're not changing. We need to persevere, all of us. We need to be able to get through this and not quit and keep going. And we're faced with challenges. Respect. Number one, care for yourself. And I, I didn't just make this up for this meeting. This is what this school is using. And I want you to understand 
this transfer of what they have and what they're working on. There's no different on how they're operating today than what they were in December or what they will do when they reopen. Respect, keep an open mind, choose kindness, ownership. This is my favorite one and a lot of schools use this because I could run a whole school on this. Own your words, own your actions, own your future. Unity, you matter, you belong, we are one. So everything that you're doing right now to unify your kids and your staff is that you need to be following those three bullet points because that's how you're going to get unity. Does that make sense? And determination. Oh, sorry, my trigger's a little, where, where'd that go? I apologize. Um, determination. You have talent, aim for greatness, make an impact. And then what they do is Gianno Be Proud is their hashtag that they develop. So everything they do, their whole, their whole handbook, everything they do is rewritten. And it's here. It's clear, concise, it's simple. Take a look at what you're communicating to your students, to your faculty, and to your community. Can you use your same values that you have today? That's what you were using yesterday. Hello, Richard. Okay, here's another school. Here's another school. They have honor, speak truthfully, act with integrity, be trustworthy, and so on down the line. They believe, they have their belief system. And at the top is um, what it is that they do. They empower others to explore greatness. And how do they do that? The three steps of how they do this. By living on or daily, by being all in, and by building connections. The teachers wrote this. The teachers wrote this because now there's buy-in. So everywhere you go, you see this. And they believe it. I was on campus, oh, about two months ago, and they had a showcase where they had, they took the whole day to showcase the work that kids were doing. It was, it was the most impressive thing I've ever seen because everything those kids do is with honor. And then it's integrated into the instruction, and that's where the magic happens. We're, we're taking steps to develop this, and we're calling, calling it BDL, um, Belief Driven Learning. And we're going to be doing some more um, webinars on that uh, to be able to showcase how you bring this alive and how it has impacted kids to where kids believe that they, we, as one kid said in a, in a panel discussion, is that we're family here. We may look different. And we may have different blood, but we're all family because we respect everyone. This was a seventh grader that made this statement. And I thought, what a powerful statement. So, so the research behind this is about building this culture, how do culture, beliefs, and values all tie in together, is that a strong culture will make your school stand out. That's why it's really important to define your culture. The next one, a well-defined culture will create a productive, engaged environment. Well-defined. Most schools, again, no disrespect, most schools cannot define their culture. We have a positive school part. It's, it's a good place for kids and so on. Yes, yes, I get that, but it has to go deeper. The next one, culture improves performance. Clearly defined beliefs and values and culture will increase performance. So when they're all aligned, this is a powerful statement. And this is, this is based on Gallup research, is that when everybody knows and agrees on the beliefs and values, it makes collaboration and execution easier. So this is why we really need to explore during this time our beliefs, our values, and what our culture truly is. And then this is the next phase of our implementation process of what we call greatness inside out, 
is that what would happen if your beliefs and values drove everything that you did? Your decisions, your policies, your procedures, your culture, your learning. What would happen in your school environment if your beliefs and values drove that? So think about decisions that you have to make. Are you making just a random decision based on, okay, we need to do this, or are you going back and truly aligning your decision with your beliefs and values? So this is an interesting process, and this is where the greatness inside out magic truly occurs. So let me share with you the six values. And again, these are based on, there's a, a series of books that I've written, uh, Building the World's Greatest High School, the name is misleading. It's really Building the World's Greatest Elementary, Middle, and High School. Um, it's based on... Uh, Richard, this is your five minute warning. I got it, we're right on. Okay, good. So, the first value is we are what we believe, what we believe unifies us. So as we look at this, if we don't have beliefs, then what is it you believe? And if you don't have values in your school community, then what is it you value? So what you believe and value truly unifies us. The next one is that I am who I am today because I'm a teacher and a series of teachers. I wouldn't be there today if it wasn't for them and I give thanks to them. So nobody gets anywhere without a teacher. The next one, all kids have futures. And it's a true statement because all of the kids are coming through us. Whether they go on to the penitentiary or they go on to become a brain surgeon. So what is their connection? What is their relationship? What is their journey like? All kids are gifted and talented. Do we truly believe that? Well, let me share with you somewheres where our words don't match our actions. Oh, yes, I truly believe all kids are gifted and talented but I only want to teach the honors kids. Within the school community, do you truly believe that your actions aren't matching your words? Every day is an opportunity to be the world's greatest me. And then everything we do, we do with pride. The idea with pride is what you saw in the others where they had honor, they had, um, 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 what was the other one, proud and so on. So these are the six values that I've come up with no matter what happens during this time. If you just worked on these six things, they wouldn't change. How we do them would change. So it's a simplified version of what we should be doing in this complex organization that we call school. And this is sort of the process that we follow in, in working with schools. We assess, we clarify the beliefs and values and the alignment. If you'd like to know more about that, please reach out and, um, and contact me. I'd love to share this, but I want to say thank you. I truly want to say thank you for who you are and what you do. Because these are challenging times and not that education is not challenging, but we have a lot to overcome, but we will overcome it. And we will be back in business. But the question is, how are we going to come back? What is it going to look like? And what are we going to communicate to kids? So I want to thank all of you for being on this call today. And Jen, I especially want to say thank you for allowing me to share my passion and my beliefs. And I hope I had the opportunity to just in a little way to change your life and impact your future. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Are you, okay. Thank you, Jen. I know. I heard you. I was switching from my headset to uh, back to my computer. Um, you know what, Richard? Thank you so much. I just really appreciate you sharing your gifts uh, with us today. I think that that brings us to the end of the hour. We do have a, a couple more minutes. Does anybody have any questions for Richard? We have about two to three more minutes before we end with our dance party and Richard selected the song and it's gonna be so awesome. But if you have a question, just unmute yourself really quick or maybe you have a thought to, to share with us before we wrap up.
I guess I can chime in. This is Gabe. How's everybody doing today? And thank you, Richard. Hi, Gabe. Uh, Thanks for joining us. Sure, absolutely. Thanks for inviting me. I think that one of the biggest challenges we all have as educators is to understand that kids staying at home and parents staying at home is really changing the whole way we function. So when you say, what is it going to look like when kids come back to school? I would say that uh, it would be a shame to return back to the way it was. We have a really great opportunity to understand that the way kids learn or are trying to learn through distance learning and the way that everybody that can work at home is working with new tools and new ways of doing business, that is going to be our new normal. Mm -hmm. And so we have to understand that the culture is how things work around here. And the way to work around here, whether you're a school, at work, wherever you define work, is going to radically change from this point forward. I, I would say this is our 9-11 moment times 100, because in the 9-11 moment, it only impacted a small number of people, but it also impacted all of us. This is really going to revolutionize how students learn, how teachers teach, and how we work. So. We really need to have a conversation with our kids because this is a really emotional, challenging moment for adults as well as kids. And how we handle that is going to define who we are. Yeah, I think I, I think you bring up such a good point, Gabe. And for those of you on this call, I'm I'm trying to get Gabe to be one of my guests in the future. So hopefully, we're going to have an opportunity to really dig into that. Um, you know, in in one of the coming weeks. But it's definitely something that I feel like all of us should be um, really resonating with right now and thinking about. Any other thoughts? Okay, well, here, here we, we go. go. I am going to stop the recording because we don't need anybody recording this, this dance party that's going to be happening. <laughs> we want everyone to be able to, to get going. So here we go.